City of Pigeons, episode 63. We are here back at the coop. Sunday was not enjoyable. Do you guys recall what I said last week and I was roasted for it? Come on, you gotta remember. I hope you were paying attention a little bit. Anyone? About how you're very concerned about their defense? No, issues? about how I said, could it be possibly a better situation for them to lose the game? Remember that? No, no, no hold on. Just hear me out. You know, we saw uh, Brandon Graham on Monday. You know, we heard him on the radio. We know for a fact that a lot of these players are very upset about what happened. Very upset. It actually, if they were going to lose the game, that actually might have been the way to lose it, to be honest with you, because now they've got a situation where they got two games coming up and things could get sketchy real quick if, if they don't get the job done, at least in one of these games, right? And with the way that game went down on Sunday – you know, a lot of these guys are going back to the drawing board. So I'm I'm not telling you that I think it was necessarily a good thing that they lost, but um, you know, I think absolutely a reality check for everybody, especially I think the coaches. And it's funny because you hear a lot of stuff on the radio. Um, all right, sounding good. The Drew Smith in the chat is what we needed. It's Think what we is needed. a technical genius. He said it would have been funny if when uh, the lights came on, we were all naked, but maybe that was just him. And I don't think Drew anybody needs that. Let's be honest. And I appreciate his. I kind of like this better that nobody could see me. I, I'm enjoying. It's too late now. You're back. Oh, it's too late. I, I we're think back. what you're saying, Jesse, oh, we're back. and what I am trying to articulate is our backs were definitely not against the wall going into the 49ers game. We were, you know, we were the front runners completely. Two games up on everyone. Right. I am confident when our backs are against the wall, and I'm anxious to see how this team responds with our backs against the wall. And for this team, even though we're still in the number one spot, our backs are against the wall this coming Sunday, and I think we're going to respond. Yeah, they better fucking win Sunday. Well, Amen. I'm not even – it's funny because – Fink, help me out here. I know you're with me. By the way, Fink, welcome to the main stage. Hey, I see guys, that you have uh, hey. labeled yourself main stage now Fink. Now on the main stage. We brought you up hey. from the makeshift Fink tank, and that's because uh, Roger you. Rock Matthews is busy playing in his old he's, head basketball league. He's been fired. Sorry, folks. He should be fired. Um, Taking over rock spot, and I'm gonna be maybe we should have Drew replace him. I bet Drew would be here. Drew would not be missing this for a basketball right. game. It's great. Drew's here behavior. every week. Nita's here every week. What Mark was saying, I'm not panicked either. Squirrel, you're still 10 and 2. You're the best team. You, you're in a driver's seat. NFC East, it's gonna come down to this game this week. We're gonna blow the doors off the Cowboys mm -hmm. because you saw you just got your ass whooped at home. Hey, I, I'd like to bring up a certain game in, in 1990 where the, the Eagles were playing yeah. the 49ers. Meech's throwback moment that most people that will miss. In, I'm in with Candlestick it, Park, I was a young 11-year-old uh, in Summerton. I remember, like, I, I specifically remember this day. Um, we were, me and a couple buddies, I think we had soccer practice or something, so we went to the Burger King on Bustleton Ave in the Leo Mall. And they had TVs in there. We, you know, got a couple fries and watched the game. You watched the game at Burger King? We watched the game at, legendary, at Burger bro. King. And, but, and, and then right rooms? after that, we went to my buddy's house and played football because it was like, I, I remember it being unseasonably warm that day. It was almost like a, a I guess it wasn't too unseasonable. It was early October, I guess. But anyway, the Niners were the best team in the league, went on to win the Super Bowl that year. The Eagles went into Candlestick Park and absolutely fucking waxed them. I mean, Garner yes. had a huge day. Cunningham went off. It was it was one of the greatest games ever, but it didn't mean that the Niners uh, were were any worse. These games happen, man. Like the, the Niners were so up for this game. They were so prepared and ready for this game. I don't think there's anything the Eagles and could have done. And had 10 days the rest before Five games as well. and 14 yeah. days. Not making excuses. Just like, no. maybe and, the guys were a little tired. And now everybody knows we're in this cycle now. We're going to play Dallas on rest, you know. Um, but I, I do want to go back to that because that was, you know how there's some games where the outcome was so decisive or, you know, you have like three or four games. Yeah. I'll give you another one no one cares about. I don't even know what year this was. This is probably early 90s. Penn beat Michigan in basketball when Michigan was like, I don't think it was Fab Five, but it, they were like third ranked in the country, right? Like, I'll never forget that game. I remember that game. Charlie Garner was one of my favorite Eagles of all yeah. time. One of the underappreciated guys. He ran hard, and he went off in that game. He ultimately ended up and playing went for to the Niners. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So And won a Super Bowl. With that them. game was the shit. But, yeah, here's my concern, though, and I think Brad, uh, the Radical Squirrel, is alluding to this in the chat. Um, you know, we do have a cycle with the Cowboys. We usually beat the Cowboys at home, and – 
we don't usually win down in Dallas. We've had a couple games of the, uh, what is it, the Jordan Matthews uh, walk-off touchdown. Am I getting that right? Jordan Matthews, right? Yeah. Okay. The walk-off touchdown comes to mind. But we go down there. We usually play. Remember we played down there with Gardner last year, and we had to shoot out with them and lost. Um, Could have won, though. Wasn't I, that, wasn't I'm not that gonna, Troy Vincent 100-yard interception return in the fourth quarter? Wasn't that in Dallas? Or am I mistaken? It may that, have been. Long ago, you know, you got your pickle juice game. But I would say in recent history, that's a tough place for us to play. Yeah. And, you know, I'd be lying. What's interesting to me is... is so you have the butt fumble game, wasn't that? A, no, that was uh, the Jets, That was wasn't the Jets. That was, that was the Jets. Yeah. That's up. Right, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Thanks, my bad. Mark. I'm usually good. I'm usually Throwing good over story. my train of thought with, with the butt fumble. My Tom, bad. you want to kill that uh, system? Yep. Okay. So, I. it's interesting to me. Normally, in this spot, 10-2, and two, headed to Dallas, we'd be like, Dallas week. But everybody, I don't want to say everybody's panicking, but we are still so shell shocked from that game. Like nobody has even turned the page to get ready for that. I've turned, I've turned it. Yeah, You're not turning the page. What are you you're not turning about? the page. You're still thinking about that game. Listen, this episode is largely about that game. So you're gonna stay. No, we're gonna we should ceremoniously decide we're gonna move to Dallas, but I'm not ready to do so. I would say this moving into this game, though, this is, I think, a tough spot for us, man. Like Everybody played their asses off against the Bills. Then we came in, we played a, a hard fought game, got our asses kicked. Now we got to go play these guys who are kick, uh, clicking on all cylinders on their 10 days rest. You know, if the Eagles go down there and, and kick their ass, that's going to show me a lot. You know, it's going to show me a lot. But what I realized is even if they were to lose that game, it's really kind of Seattle that you, you would end up having to really, you can't have a letdown there. Dallas has got a tough schedule. But one thing I wanted to ask you guys. There's the been Seattle a- game in many respects, sorry to interrupt you, is – just as hard or harder. It might be. They played very well against the, the Cowboys in that game last week. After Going into Seattle on a like Monday night were, is not an easy task. Yeah, they looked like they were ready to be you know shot and killed and done, put out to pasture, and they played a great game at the Cowboys. So up in, we never play well in Seattle either, by the way, so that's not a good thing. Um, but I want to ask you guys a question because I hear people on the radio and, and talk, in media debating, you know, it's the coaches, it's the players, it's execution, yada, yada, yada. And I just wonder... With the level of talent we have, I mean, look at our line. We got all the vets that have been great for years. We've got explosive players all across the offense. Defense, you can certainly point to some holes. But my point is this. Don't you think there are coordinators out there that if they were, you know, strategizing how to use these players that we would have seen a more cohesive, effective game plan at some point during the season? Like, that's my concern. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Listen, they have they had some key injuries this year that really hurt. I think the biggest one it was Avante Maddox. You, you see how much they miss him every week. I mean, uh, he was huge. Nicobe Dean, you expected a lot out of him, and he looked good in moments, but he, he can't did. stay healthy. I mean, he was you, you didn't expect too much, but you wanted him out there and showing improvement. And when you're not getting it over it, over the middle, you lose all your confidence. And all these completions are like, look at that. It was a seven-yard pass to Debo, and he just bullied our DBs down the field for a, to make it an 80-yard touchdown. It's it's embarrassing when when it's like that. I have to shout out Dan McQuaid because Dan McQuaid is like – you know how like real shows have the guy that's running the stats in the background? He is doing that for us, and he's pointing out it was a, Jer- a Jerome Allen jumper with a few seconds left in Ann Arbor. Oh, shit. That was the – like anyone who's followed Big Five basketball for a Penn fan – Jerome Allen, Matt Maloney, that was absolutely the best era of Penn basketball. Now, my dad will tell you that they made the Final Four back and in the 70s. also shout away. out to Dan McQuaid, a new father. His, uh, yes. his son, oh, son congrats, uh, Dan the other McQuaid, day. Baby. Congrats, uh, congrats, Dan, Dan. And, and his Woo! wife, Jan, are, are doing well at home. And He actually put a nice video together for us, which we're going to show in a minute. But it, is, well, is this um, a sign all of these things falling the way they had this Dan's, week. Dan's baby being that <laughs> Penn is going to beat Kentucky on Saturday, oh, Jesse. I see where you're going. Uh, I hope so. They lost a really tough game with that LaSalle <laughs> three pointer from uh, the freaking half, half court. court runner yeah, that was 35. tough. I was in the building for that. I'm going to head down there this weekend and watch. You yeah, know, I think I might join you. Yeah, when Kentucky comes to town, you know, you got to get down there. What's Kentucky ranked right now, Dan McQuaid? Dan, can you hit us up in the chat with that? I do not know that <laughs> off the top. They of my lost head. to UNC Our Wilmington no, last Dan week. McQuaid. Interestingly, there are people in our midst that have not been happy with the Eagles approach and have decided to take on the media members that are uh, defending the coaches and the team. And uh, that's one Eric Fink, who boldly goes where no one else goes. He is involved in multiple Twitter feuds with different 
Philadelphia sports media personalities. Love Fink, would you up. care to comment on how you're calling people out for being apologists for the Eagles? It's not even that. I'm more mad at these beat writers because the run the ball guys are down there and they're calling the fans idiots. That's what they're basically saying. They're really out there. They're like, oh, these guys are stupid. They're big idiots, blah, blah, blah. When in reality, we ran our running back route ran the ball nine times. Like, you don't want that in your game plan. Okay, I, I'm a little. I'm not following you. So, can you clarify? <laughs> the run the ball guys. They want the ball to be run more. Both those things can be true. And yeah. are you saying nine runs is enough? No. Okay, so but you're what, what I'm the saying the is guys? the media guys are out there calling these fans who are down right. there at Novacare idiots. Right. And, saying okay, but like they're not. Right. And, and, and they always just want fans to be like they think they're the smartest in the room, and you guys right. aren't. Like stop. Right. And we've talked about this. Obviously, there's a lot of plays that might be called runs that are being. Think aren't you in the media of, now? Aren't you a media member yeah, now? Media. What are you talking Fantastic about? Fantastic Fox show. Yeah. Actually, I don't know your, what you guys are talking no, I, I, about. You I can't met, hold me down. I met your buddy from the uh, the Fox show, your co-host. Jason Martinez. Yeah, That's I met my Jason, and I told him, you know, look, I, I like what you guys do. I'm, You seem like a good guy. You're talented, but you need to back off Fink. You know, you cannot Perfect. take Fink for your Fox show. That's not how this works. And he seemed a little bit taken aback by that. I was very direct. We already had a rough negotiation. That's last, not last exactly night. how it went. I was like, oh, you're like a legit media person. It's like, hey, what's up, buddy? He's like Shug Knight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah. He looked charity very, event. He looked very official. Yo, like, a, I love I love this run the ball debate because it means fucking nothing. It does. It, it, exactly. I like, just feel like I'm talking it, it's, about it's, the it's fans. All, it's all in context. It, you run the ball if you're winning. And if you're down, you're not going to run the ball. It's it's. The, the run the ball thing is like the mid-season uh, radio argument version of l going over the schedule before the season. Yeah. Be like, win, loss, loss, ball. Oh, they're going to win in Green Bay, losing. Uh, like, it, it means nothing in the gr in the grand scheme of things. If if they're going to successfully run the ball, then run it more. If not, then abandon it. Who gives a shit? So They'll figure I, it out this week. I think They didn't run the ball enough. That, absolutely, they didn't run the ball enough. But eh, would it have mattered? What, what would they have not given up six touchdowns and in a row because they again <laughs> because it was 14-6 at halftime. It was a one possession game in the third quarter. Like you abandoned the, they ran two times in the second quarter. That's insane. And then the best time in the first quarter we were running the ball, it was 6-6. Six, six. We looked well, the best we did. We didn't capitalize with the touchdowns, this just, but this might all go back to my theory that they didn't the want to the, show anything and they just gave this game up. And, and I will right, say at the end of the day like Meek said it really does not mean shit about running Look, the ball. You, Stop calling Philly no, fans no, no. idiots. You, you got to have some balance. Tell them and I, I, Tired look, of it. Standing up for the I'll people. I'll tell you one thing that the I'm people he I'm, left behind. One thing I'm tired of. Just like the Eagles seem to, for example, they don't value the linebacker position. When it comes to running backs, you know, they did make the move for Swift, which kind of indicated maybe they realize they need somebody there that's explosive, what have you. But what they've done with him this year, I just can't understand. If they're deliberately trying to uh, make sure the guy has, you know, load management so he doesn't get hurt because he's got a history of being injured, okay. But there have been multiple occasions where his explosiveness has blown open a game. And by the way, if you look at his Lions tape, there are so many screen passes that he, you know, went yeah. for 60 yards. Like, why the hell – can we not unleash this dude? Because guess what? Especially if, with offensive linemen who can get out and, but, and block downfield for right. him. But look at him like this. Fire no, Ryan in, Johnson. In the, in the, with the Niners, they started to get Christian McCaffrey off, and then they're running Debo behind us. They have the threat of McCaffrey. Like, it sets everything up, and I just don't understand. What are we waiting for to say – Swift is the feature back, and we're going to run him until you stop him. Like, I just don't understand. Why can't we do that? Why? I was even watching the stupid Cowboys last week in that Thursday night game, and they're running Tony Pollard, and they're running him good. So then they mix it up with C.D. Lamb, and he gets like 20 yards on, on a run. Like, you got to mix shit up. You, you have to be creative with the run game. You can't just try and take a DeAndre Swift and run him between tackles and think it's going to be successful. Are we longing for the days of Andy Reid and the James not. Trash end I around? Andy no. Reed. No, is that what I'm that's hearing? That's what we're dealing with. I think with. what you're saying is that you're seeing a lack of – and I agree with this, a lack of ingenuity There's no in, creativity. In, in, in the offense. Yeah. And it felt like over the past few years, the Eagles have always been at the cutting edge and they've always been ahead of teams on what they've done. And other than the tush push, which is obviously not that creative, um, there does seem to be a lack of ingenuity. I don't even remember in early in the first quarter, they lined up four wideouts on the right and they lined up swift behind them. 
and they threw a wide receiver screen to Swift and he got like 25 yards. So they basically had all of the other four wide receivers blocking for him. And I was like, wow, this is like the first time in six weeks I've seen the Eagles run something different, something new. And right. so I am with you that they need to get creative. They need to be cutting edge. They need to be ahead of uh, the other teams and what they're doing. And I, I seen there was a set. Brock Purdy had four passes that had air yards of eight air yards for 125 yards. Right. That's insane. Why can't we do it? Like, yeah. it's not that crazy. It's well, just Tebow's it, a straight up bully. Yeah, he's, well, he's he's a monster. Yeah, well, he, got, like, yeah. he really is. Ayuka's nasty. Yeah. They got, you got Kittle. But, I mean, but here's the got, thing. You have guys on your team that are just as nasty, and it's your job to get them the ball in space. And they're just not yeah, doing AJ that. AJ Brown can bully you. Do yeah. do that with AJ Brown. AJ Brown could run a seven yard slant pretty much every play. Yeah. And I think it would get you know, ten I, yards. Right. I'm just confused. I'm confused and why up to this point, with the level of talent that we have, we have yet to see a cohesive game from the offense. And that's what I was saying last week. You know, like that's just a fact. The record is the record. I'm psyched to be here. And you know what the funny thing is? If somebody had told you they were gonna go beat the Cowboys beat the Chiefs, beat the Bills, and then lose to the Niners, and we'd act like the sky is falling, you wouldn't have some believed of us, it. Some of us you wouldn't are believe acting it. like the sky is falling. Well, I'm telling you why it really pisses me off, though, because we had that whole thing with their fan base talking shit to us and you know their radio guys puffing out their chests, and I had a guy right behind me who was talking shit from like the, the box above me the whole game, and very quickly... I had there was nothing you could say. You know what I mean? You get to a point where there's nothing worst, you can say. You just like him, there's nothing. Well, he was up high. I was trying to get somebody. I was going <laughs> to lift him up. But if you were there, you would have done it. But this guy was going off, and I was just like, I can't take this anymore. You know what I mean? It was awful. But that's so, the other thing. But that's what pisses me off is that this was supposed to be us saying, no, 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 we don't care. We did. We would have kicked your ass last year with Brock Purdy too. We're right. better than you. Right. We're tougher than you. And we got our asses kicked. And as a fan, you know what? That sucked. But this is all the Niners have, and this is all they will have for the season. We are. A next level football team. This yeah, is what they. But they wanted. beat us by thirty points. So and right now, what they look, have you, is pretty look, good. They look also pretty good. The Jets, but we're ten and two. What confuses me is Purdy looked so bad on the first two drives. Exactly. So and, but All then right. we didn't run now, the ball, and the defense got gas. And <laughs> I was kidding. There was a uniquely <laughs> Philly. There was a uniquely Philly scenario that transpired in this game that we'd be remiss if we didn't touch on. And that is this legend of Big uh -huh. Dom, who we all Big know. Dom. Big Dom is, you know, become the, the mascot of Philadelphia. Um, very interesting scenario that transpired there. You know, he gets kicked out of the game for um, having an, an altercation with a player while the game's going on, which is rare for somebody who's not part of the coach staff or a player. Um, gets a standing ovation as he's walking off the field, which was funny. Um, so I was interested to see how that was going to go because, you know, there was two ways it could have gone. Either Sirianni is like, this is a bad look. You know, the NFL is not going to like this. Dom, you can't do that. Or Sirianni was going to be like, fuck him. You know, like, you're my guy. I got your back. I don't give a shit, you know. And interestingly, we had an event on uh, Monday night for the it's all this we shit no hold on hold on, <laughs> hold on i'm gonna get to that we had an event for make the world better we partnered with the chris long foundation connor barber and chris long for team dinner at steak 48 shout out to steak 48 for giving us the restaurant for this fine event um uh, it occurs steak to me that everybody here but meach was there and i thought like he hadn't given me shit about it but he just made that comment so now i, I know he does the feel a he certain was holding sort of on to that when he was I, have to, I feel no certain way honestly i'm, I'm gonna have to explain that but he, anyway, has, to, he has to he has to stand in for rock since rock yeah. in here Did yeah. i see yeah. rock, rock in the chat in, his feelings. I just, in the I chat feel, but he's not um, in the stream yard he's on the bench he's on the bench that's right i think i honestly got do not I think field. Rock is in the chat, like on his way home from basketball, you know, looking at his phone, probably about to crash. I see Devin Caney in the chat. Devin was Ooh. nice enough to lend us her services to be on the red carpet um, and interview people, which was amazing. Her and our good friend, Pat Gallon, those guys are the best. They uh, they rocked with me. Yeah. Um, He's getting scolded right now. now. In the chat. Like, what did on, you man. do? What did you do? Okay. Fink, do you have those pictures, by the way? By the way, way Big Dom was up? at the event that I was at tonight as well. Oh, was he? Okay. So, so he, that, and yes. I tried to grab him to come here, but he was with oh, he his kids. And, okay. So, but, so he's still going. Yeah. So that day, I, I text someone. I said, This is on Monday. I said, We got to get Big Dom. And I said, It's probably unlikely, you know, on a normal Monday, you would probably get him. But after what happened last night, I don't think so. You know, I was. Spat and the guy have to lay low. Maybe Nick was like, on Jimmy Kimmel that night or something. No, Nick was like, <laughs> chill, you know. Anyway, we're at the event. 
bunch of former players, you know, Selleck and AJ Feely, Mike Quick, Howard Carmichael. Um, who else was there? But a bunch of people. Rock. Anyway, correct. so uh, Big Dom walks in, <laughs> and I swear to God, oh, God, when Big Dom walked into this restaurant, it was, like, photos, it was like, it was like, no, I do want those photos. It's good. Uh, Big Dom walks in. It's like Taylor Swift, Taylor the, Swift walking. The energy in. shifted. It the was music everybody, stopped. It was everybody wild. wanted to see Big Dom and take a picture with him. Now, there was a lot of cool things that happened that night, one of which was I got to wear Chris Long's Super Bowl parade fur coat, legit, with an Eagles ring. You can't see here. With the Eagles insider himself, Dave Spadaro. That was nice. Show the ring picture, Fink, because I, I did get a, uh, a picture. Oh, this is me right here modeling the fur coat for the restaurant. This Meet photo you. actually goes for hard. the restaurant. Yeah, it looks a lot yeah, better pretty, over here, but it goes, it goes pretty hard. I'd make that like my Twitter profile. My <laughs> buddy was like, oh, I thought that was Chris Long, but then I saw your head. And I was like, oh, dude, why well, you got to do that to me? All right, do you have the ring photo, thing? Because I think that's oh, really, okay, okay, this okay, is the okay, pinnacle. Okay. This, I mean, folks, you know, you can't, you can't do it any better than that. That's a First real. First of all, the ring's completely out of focus. I know. You just want to show that picture of yourself. He's like, like, yeah, he was happy with the way he looked. He barely even. Make out the ring. Gee, just the jazz jazz over here. Like, I want you to know. That is a great State jawline. Warriors is that what you want us to remark on the <laughs> jawline? He's so happy with that picture. Wait, wait. He had I to want get you it out. to know that I'm not. I'm not being serious there. Like I am trying to get like the stupid. I have a better picture with. Yeah, yeah, I heard you had you asked Philly Look at that. to take your photo. Huey here. Dillon, Dave. Yeah. Huey, Huey. <laughs> anyway, my point is this, and think you can take that picture down at any moment, um, <laughs> like immediately. <laughs> now, just know I sent that to him to embarrass myself. So no, he did you're not. welcome. Yes, I did. You stop lying. How come all these chicks in the chat are, are saying, "Woo, they're all turned on there. How hot no, is that? Devin, you cannot uh, spam the chat, please. No, Devin was there. Everyone had a great time. Um, and I thank, I thank Mark. Uh, Mark has been a supporter of Make the World Better for a long time. Purchased a ticket. Tom has been a in-kind supporter of Make the World Better for years. They've been doing Federal Donuts. has been doing all of our concerts, all that. Fink was given a a, a invite solely because Devin lended her services. Oh, I, so thought, he I was, thought it was because you lent me. <laughs> he was riding her coattails as usual. And it's just a thing, and we know it, and it's fine. Dev, That's why he gets get scolded it. in it's the okay. chat during his pod. Anyway. Fink, um, you told me you got those credentials through the Fantastic Fox Sports Show, dude. Uh, yeah, I didn't think Jesse was going to blow up my spot. <laughs> it's <laughs> called right Fantastic uh, yeah. Fox Sports Show. Anyway, the point is, Dom is in there, and he is like a celebrity. Everybody wants his photo, and he he toured the entire restaurant. So at that point, I knew nobody said anything to him, and he was good to go. <laughs> so, But interestingly, and if any of you guys follow City Pitches on Twitter, earlier we announced that we were going to have Dom's mentor – uh, some of you guys may know Butch Butchianico, uh, who was the head of security for the Eagles prior to Dom and who, you know, Dom learned everything under. And I talked to Dom on Monday night. And he said he was the first person he was calling. Um, and one of my favorite words, tutelage. Tutelage. Yes. Under the tutelage. Under his tutelage. And so the reason that we want to have Butch on for a couple of reasons, but I, I'm going to play this video. Leko, hold on one sec. You pull that thing, cue it up. So Butch actually had a similar instance is different because he didn't have an altercation per se, but he did cost the team uh, a penalty. And so uh, I wanted to show this, uh, this video that shows what happened with Butch back in the, the days when Butch was the head of security. Aleko, can you cue said video, please? J.R. Reed into Carolina territory. Finally taken down inside the 30 by Ricky Manning Jr., and there is a late flag as well. With 15 yards unsportsmanlike on the Eagles, the official on the sideline was knocked down by a member of the team's bench. Comes all the way across to make the tackle. There's your collision right there down at the bottom. Actually, I'd give it to a, a player and a coach on the sideline. Okay, so, so I just want to say. Poor Butch wasn't way, expecting J.R. Reed to be a, a burner no. down those no. sidelines. My man was flying in that play. Listen, it's a horrible call. Weak. Listen, if we pulled that off, can someone in the chat tell us if that video montage we just did worked? Because if it did, I think we made up for the beginning of the show right then and there. Okay. So and, and also if it did work, could you hear us talking about it in the background? Yeah, we don't know what's going on. Okay. So <laughs> thank you. Interesting scenario there. You see Butch running down the sideline, excited about the fact that J.R. Reed is returning a kick, right? And the ref runs up behind him because he's literally like a foot off the field. Yeah. 
and and gets knocked down. And interesting to me that they called a penalty there because it didn't impact. Yeah, it had nothing to do yeah. with the play. Who cares? You, you fell down. So you got to penalize my man Butch over right. here. Yeah. So what happened after that? And by the way, Butch is like the most legendary South Philadelphia person. He started his career as a Philadelphia police officer. And the reason that we were going to have on the show is because not only uh, was Butch the head of security under Andy Reid for many years, at one time he was the head of the security detail for the mayor of Philadelphia, one Ed Rendell. And I will let you guys know, you know how you have those characters when you're growing up that like you'll just never forget? They're just the most individually compelling characters. I mean, this dude, he was Philadelphia oh. to me. Do you know what I mean? He would... You know, my dad had probably what eight, ten different guys and and women that drove him around, and this was he was the head of the the show. And uh, I'll give you one anecdote about Butch that I thought was really funny, and and he actually was going to tell some stories about me because I got out of trouble a bunch of times, and I never knew if it was getting to him. And I'm guessing that it did, and he got to like <laughs> shut stuff down. And we were going to get those stories, so I promise you guys, if this is interesting to anyone but me, um, we're going to get him on. We're going to have these stories, but I'll give you one story. So every once in a while, he would the detail would do something. And this was the same if when my dad was mayor or my dad was governor, they would do something that was not related to security. Like for example, on one occasion, Butch picked me up from the airport, right? So he picked me up at the airport. I can't remember where the hell I was coming from. Had to be teenager. Um, not, I don't know how old I was, but um, so he picks me up and he's in like a minivan, you know, unmarked minivan, whatever. And so we're driving home. We're on 76. We're right by kind of when you get past university city before you get to, you know, chestnut market, whatever. And uh, there's a guy, he starts getting all pissed off. He's like, what the, what the fuck is up with this guy behind? We'll take beer back the hell off. You know, I'm just sitting there like, okay, yeah, cool. No worries. You know, and uh, <laughs> all of a sudden this, this goes on for a little while. And Butch goes, I'm sorry, Jess, I got to handle something. He reaches down, grabs the portable police light, reaches out of the window, slaps it on top, turns it on, slams on the brakes in the middle of 76, right? <laughs> where there's no no anything gets out of the car goes back yells at this dude for literally like a minute you know what the fuck, blah, blah, blah. gets back in the car slams the door he's like all right just let's go <laughs> you know and, and like that was just one little microcosm of the the butch experience so i can't wait to get him in here to talk about he's got great stories about i mean the stuff he's got with my dad is probably unbelievable so we're going to get him in here this week was going to be particularly relevant though because you know, he had the same experience as Dom, and he still talks to Dom all the time. But we're going to get him back. So that is the Butch Butch Anico I story. Can't wait for Butch. You guys down with that? Yeah, Butch is a very meech all guy. In. Like, these guys will get along yeah. right away. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, on that note, we're going to pivot. I know that was a bit of a diatribe. Thank you guys for listening to me. Um, I think we're going to pull in our man from Chili Bets because Meech told me when he came in here that He's been doing pretty well. And I think he bought us all dinner. Was that the idea? You're doing well? well Was did I, supposed I, to pay did I buy it? Did FanDuel buy it? Or did Chili Rufo buy it? We let's, don't know. Let's find out. But thank you for that. The pizza was delicious. You're welcome. So if somebody could add chili to the stage in here, right, let's is. make sure we can hear him. Yo. In that in that fresh chili merch, look at him. Yeah. What's can, happening, my man? Can you hear us? I can hear you guys. I can see you guys, too. So couldn't see you guys last night. Sweet. Beautiful. Yeah, this is better than last time where I think you saw a picture of Fink's cat, right? <laughs> yeah, I was, staring, I was staring at the pic the whole time for sure. <laughs> Joel cat beat. Beautiful. All right. How about now, my sound? Now, is that uh, good? There's some music in the background. I don't know. No, yeah, you're good, dude. You're, you're, you're good. good. Oh, okay. Now, we don't want to keep you too long because I know you probably got uh, halftime live wagers you got to get out. <laughs> but that that's like the, the new the new thing with FanDuel. They put out these, these halftime live bets, right? And... Chris, tell the tell the people some of these lines are crazy, especially like last night was an in season tournament game where even if the game's a blowout, these guys are gonna play a few extra minutes and they're they're gonna probably exceed their scoring totals. But tell them how great this this new the live bet uh, odds are uh, in, in yeah. Fandle. So it's it's only Fandle I think that's posting them, but it, the lines are just ridiculous. So. Example, say Embiid's point line's at 30. If he has 12 in the first half, so for some reason he's slightly below under um, pace, they'll bump his 30-point line to, like, plus 300. When, I mean, he, he could easily go 12 and 18 and get to 30. That's just and an example. Not, even, not only to mention, he's, like, the highest-scoring third-quarter guy in the NBA, so he's, like, the perfect exactly. kind of guy to pull that off. Exactly. We're t the goal, obviously, is just to attack 
like the stars who score in the second half. Like they're yeah. they're always gonna have like one good half to get back to it. Um, I'm literally on Embiid right now, 50 points because he had 15 in the first quarter, and then he had like 28 in the first half, and then his 50 point line was like plus 600. I was like, that's a milestone. He's going for it. Like there's yeah, yeah. there's just player incentive to shoot for. It's pretty cool. Right, and that's something you can't account for. Like, I don't think Fanduel understands that that he he would actually shoot for something like that. It it doesn't uh, go into their algorithm, especially with these live lines. You you can't account for, but you just got to hope the game stays close at the end, pretty much, right? But all right, for yeah. example, last night, last night we were um, he put out on the first in season tournament game. I think Julius Randle had like nineteen at the half. And uh, Giannis maybe had 16, something like that. Let, let's just say that. So we did uh, Giannis for 35, Randall for 40. No, Randall had more than that. He like 26 and a half, right? Yeah, he, he was killing it. And his line for 40, uh, for some reason, was through the roof. Yeah, and for him to only score 14 more points, he was like plus 290. And so we yeah. parlayed that with, with Giannis to get 30. And next thing you know, I'm hitting a seventy seven hundred dollar bet on fifty five dollars. <laughs> Hell yeah! Which it's, I thank for my man. It was that was huge last night. Yeah, it's it's pretty fucking. I'm gonna call you uh, Santa Chili at my house. But you're buying all <laughs> my kids their, their Christmas. That's the goal. Gifts. That's <laughs> the goal, man. It's about that time. Um, yeah. No, yeah, the odds are insane. And then, yeah, like we were yeah. saying, it's just there's incentives you can look at, like. I feel like like Fanduel obviously prices everything objectively. Like this is what he should get, but like if Embiid has nine assists, you know he's going for that tenth assist. Like right. they don't look at that shit. So yeah, NBA is definitely some value. Yeah, so you you follow the shit and and uh and listen, Chili makes you keeps you disciplined. He's he's not crazy. It's one capper in the bet if, and the, in the Discord. If you're looking one to, capper in the Discord, baby. If, if you're looking oh, yeah. to uh, make some holiday cash, go go check out Chili Bets. Give him give okay. him a try for a month. How do we uh, how do we do that, right? So for the rest of us that aren't familiar with the cappers in the Discord, how do we get involved with Chili if we want to make some money for our presence? Yeah, you know what? I can get uh, I can get you guys. If you want to share like a link, like a free five day pass or something like that. It, that works. I don't know if there's somebody. Oh, no, but for the that. for the commoner, for for the regular person out there who's trying to who's trying to join, just uh, let them know how to do it. Yo, don't interrupt them on that free five day pass though. Well, <laughs> I mean, they'll give it to you anyway. Uh, what do you, What do you mean? Like how, how to join? Pretty much. Yeah, go. What do, you, what do you have to sign up? Is that Dub Club you got to go to? Yeah. Go to okay, Chili yeah, Bets. Yeah. On. We're we're just trying so, to get you more uh, more subscribers yeah, I get, here. I get it. Um, yeah. I it. So Chili Chili. Because a lot of people. Twitter. A lot of people have no idea about this. You know, they're watching this. They're not on Twitter. They don't. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a lot to it. It's they make it probably harder than it needs to be. But Chili Bets on Twitter, there's basically a Dub Club link, which will hook you up to another app, which is Discord. And then basically, I send at, an ad out to everyone. You get the notification. You see the pick. Put it in. Um, the live bets are kind of more so if you're trying to be proactive, and be on your phone. But there's obviously other shit to put in. Some money, so beautiful. I, th- I think he's only had one okay. one week that wasn't uh profitable since since he's been. Yeah. Like, that- Let, I'm, interested. I'm interested in the bets, don't get me wrong, but that's a nice sweatshirt, you know what I mean? Is there a chili merch store somewhere that we yeah. need to know about? What's the deal? So we had it up, but it's down now. But I have a shitload of hoodies in my bedroom so I can get you guys some. And yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I just told hey. them to hit me up on, I just told people to hit me up on discord and I'll, I'll send it out to them. It's pretty simple. I only got largest right. left though. So largest. There you go. Yeah. But if, if you guys are largest, I'm a, I'm, I got, little, I got the hookup. I'm a little husky for that, man. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Same but here, man. That's I'm, a nice I'm item. Excel, Appreciate now, it, now what are we on tonight? You got, I didn't have time to put anything in. I was preparing for the show, and I'm a dedicated uh, podcast host. So right. I really didn't <laughs> get a chance. Let me to tell you what in. that included. <laughs> Ordering pizzas. I'm telling you, my, uh, my phone screen time is like through the roof now, so I I can probably pull it up. <laughs> just 14 hours of just refreshing FanDuel, Discords, back and forth. Through. Great. Yeah, it's, it's like a – honestly, more than a full-time job. You, you put more hours in this than – most people do during their job. So yeah. we appreciate it. Yeah, but it's the end of the day. Yeah, I appreciate it. 
Thanks, Mitch. Appreciate it. Kudos to you. I'm glad you and Mitch are going to have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> I might I might tap into Can the Can I Discord. ask a question? You could too. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and, and don't take this the wrong way. I actually am admiring this. Um, have you been able to carve this out as a full-time occupation? We were actually, before we got on the show, talking about uh, someone we know who's a full-time poker player. So I'm just interested. Jeez. Yeah. Um, so I started it in September, I want to say September 7th, and then full-time, quit my other job full-time as of like two and a half weeks later. So it's going well. Hey, Let's go. Baby. Good stuff. Right. Right. It's because of the guys on that. like me <laughs> that stay oh, yeah. in the Discord, <laughs> baby. Right. I've been a day one Chili my- guy. Beautiful. All right, dude. Hey, thanks for joining us. We will send as many people thanks, your way man. as we can. Hey, can you come by Chili and see bets. us one time? Where are you in Philly? Yeah, I'm local. I, I, I'm Delaware County. I definitely got to come in. It's, it's All right, we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a Christmas party. Okay, I want you Say to come less. to the Christmas party. <laughs> Say less. We'll get you details. It's gonna be for yeah, the. Shoot uh, me a text. I'm there. The Eagles uh, Seahawks game. I'm gonna. Yeah, announce awesome. more information but if you can come every time you say that i get sad it's going to be fantastic i'm yeah, sorry man sure. scheduling is tough scheduling is tough all right thanks dude all right get back good to the i appreciate you guys man. good luck thanks, appreciate you. guys we have to have a breaking segment because there's a lot of things going on tonight sixers wizards it's like anytime the wizards could be the most the least exciting you know when the Sixers play wizards come on it's garbage Nobody okay cares. you got that you got Iona playing. Mark, what's going on with Sully? Well? How are they doing? We uh, were down 57 to 47 with two and a half minutes to go. It is 59 okay. 55 with 26 now, seconds. No one cares, but here's the thing oh. I do want to hear the story behind because nobody knows why you care about Iona. I want to get to that. But there was a more important game tonight, and this took place just off of uh, City Line Avenue uh, between a handful of mediocre at best basketball players <laughs> and there's one individual who thought this game was a can't miss scenario and i get that he's true to his team but we need to get an update and i want to get right Uh-oh. to it Uh-oh. what was the line Uh-oh. that won roger rock matthews what was the basketball game line that you put up tonight sir it was bad it was bad <laughs> 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 at least he's honest he could have came on from here. the jump oh my from God. the yeah, jump it was terrible. I think I had about six points, probably I don't know four rebounds, maybe an assist or two. It was it was just, it was a bad night. I had an off night, you know. Rock, you can't, not to make you can't win night. them all. Yeah, not Rocky to make your night any Says worse. Rocky I took over your spot now. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I see that, man. Don't be farting in my chair over there. Right? <laughs> he, he already carved his name on the Lethal. desk over here. Lethal. I know you got that. Yeah, it was a bad night. You know, you can't win them all. Like last last week, I came out there and probably dropped about twenty five. And this week, I just you know, some nights you just not feel wow. it. I'm like the Jordan Poole of the league. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> On so. and off. Did you sustain? Fink, Fink and- wants to know what do you think <laughs> of the name the Rock Tank? Look. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see it with the Mock Tank. What? The, the, the Rock never, Tank. Never, You're gonna look go at the, the line that Squirrel tank. gave I'm just messing with you, my man. That's the idea. <laughs> Can we get the chat? I, back can't, on I there? can't believe Rock came on here and just lied on air saying he dropped 25 points last week. Stop that. <laughs> oh, come on, can you throw up the chat uh, so I can see it in there? All yeah, right. Well, you've seen me. All rock. I can get hot, oh. man. I can get hot. You know what I mean? By so the way, last this, week I was hot. This oh, week I was cold. Yeah. Wait, Rock, look at what Radical Squirrel said your line was. <laughs> <laughs> that, zero, was zero, no, zero. No, that was me about so. I had a shitty game this week, had a great game last week, and the week before, I was about zero, zero, and zero. So, scroll Well, maybe you should have taken the week off and come to the podcast, but it's fine. Luckily, we have a it's deep... The podcast came out on. That's terrible. Yeah, we have a deep, <laughs> deep... <laughs> <rock>. <laughs> we got a deep roster, so it's fine. It's yeah, totally I know, fine. I know. I, uh, when I turned, when I first turned the podcast on, I couldn't see anything, couldn't hear anything. I, I was like, I was tempted to just come straight over there and fix all the audio video equipment. For like, <laughs> yeah. together, but Don't worry. I got it. Handled, got it Rock. it I fixed it. Yeah. I fixed it. Don't you worry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank got us. Okay. Rock the PJ. So I, I did want to talk uh, quickly about some exciting things that are happening here because um we got the coop we've had for a while. By the way, uh, we started up an account for the coop. So check out the coop Philly for uh, details on what's going on at the coop because we're having more things happening. And Saturday night, we have this kind of mysterious event 
um, which uh, I guess I'm just going to come right out with it and kind of ruin the surprise. Although I was and make it not so. Don't mysterious. tell him. Is he allowed to do that? Don't, don't tell him. No, I don't do it. No, I'm not. Don't tell him. I'm not. Wasn't I told to tell them? Tell him. I'm not getting this sign. Give me the sign. I'm not giving me I can't. I can't. Aleko, can you shoot that sign there? We have Is he allowed to do this? the Don't Tell Comedy Show going down at the Coop on Saturday night. No. Oh. I'm not allowed to tell you Place who's is gonna on be the packed. show, but this Saturday? trust me. What did you yep. say? This Saturday? This Saturday. Oh. oh, I know you're a comedy guy. Can you, can oh, you come? I love comedy. I believe can, so. I got to go talk to okay. the wife, but I think we're so Rock, we're rock a non-sports event at the Coop. I think Lindsay's going to be here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know where she's gonna be. You know, she's a she's a mover and a shaker. You know, sometimes she's in New York doing her real estate thing. But if she's here, all right, we'll we'll get you here, here at a minimum. Uh, yeah. But I I know that there are some amazing comics that are gonna do this. We're gonna have upwards. I think they already sold sixty tickets. We're gonna have probably a hundred people in here. It's gonna be wild. If you're watching this and Let's you go. like comedy and a good time, no better place to be Saturday night than the coop for the Don't Tell Comedy Show. There kind you go. Mad I'm not going to be able to make it. It's I know Meech's bartending, like I said, every night of the week for the next three weeks. But you know, you got to do, you got to do. Can't knock the hustle. Then got a family to, to care for. So on the heels of that, on Sunday night, we do have a big game. Like I said, it's Dallas week, and uh, it's late in the show here. But I think I'll officially say we're going to turn the page and we're going to go to Dallas week and start to get fired up for that. And uh, you know, if you want to stay home and Watch it on your couch so that as soon as, you know, the game's over, you can go right to bed. You can get all comfortable and snuggle in. You're terribly lame. And I've, I've noticed, by the way, a lot of people who come to watch games here, they're taking off in the third quarter because they want to be nestled into bed. And I just think they're the biggest frauds. But here's the thing. We'll be here, right? All of us, friends, family. If you're watching the show and you would like to come to the Coop, you've never come before, you should come. Shoot us a DM. We'll give you all the info you need. Come on down. We got spacious couch scenarios. We got high tops. It's very jazzy. There's only a slight initiation. <laughs> You'll probably be offered cannabis products by someone. I mean, let's just be honest about it. And Can you're you going to have, that? I'm saying it, you're going to have a great I time. You Guys, it's freaking street legal, man. Are you serious at this point? No, it's not. Anyway, point is, you got to come down. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a wholesome event. Friends, family, what have you. We'll be here. Dallas sucks. And if the Eagles they win, it's going to be great. If they don't, it's going to be terrible. And it's just, you know that going into any scenario that you get into. Then, on the heels of that, the following week, we've been looking for a time to have the uh, Christmas party. You guys remember last year? Let's throw it back to last the year. The annual Christmas party now. Back we in, can the, finally, in the... When you have it twice, it'll be... Annual. An annual. <laughs> I've gotten yelled at for calling an event annual in the first year, but um, the, I've learned you say inaugural. Okay? Yeah. Now, last year, back in the Kismet Maniunk era... Uh, we had an awesome time. Remember, Jamie Lynch was our guest, and he's just around the corner. He probably can't come on the air with us, but I'm going to get him in the building for it. Um, we had what ended up being like a potluck thing. You remember we had what? Angelo's. You brought the stuff from the bakery. Remember? Yeah, I brought Holmesburg Bakery. What else and is I in there? Charlie's Pizza. Tom brought like Goldie. I had the hummus and pita. From, we had yep, it all. Goldie. We had too much. I'll but bring that again. I thought it was such a cool spread where everyone kind of brought something from their neighborhood that I would love to bring back the concept for this of – the potluck Christmas party. Okay, I'm so in. here's the deal. Yo, now I'm straight up crying over here. I'm sorry. Mark cannot be here, so he's upset. But it's very hard to plan around six people's schedules. Where are you going to be? It's almost impossible. I'm going to be in, down in Tennessee uh, watching the Titans going game. To like a Ruber. You got business, and I that's fine. You Tennessee. could probably come home earlier, but Tennessee. your call. Okay. You're the only ten. But tell him, Fink. There it is. <laughs> You're the only ten I see, Mark. <laughs> Listen, this was very hard to schedule shoes. because of Meech's bartending schedule. But when the Eagles game moved to Monday night, we realized he didn't have a gig that night. And let's just do a watch party, Christmas party, potluck. We will do a podcast. I think we're gonna do a pregame podcast. I'm so. like one of the Eagles fans whose plane tickets leave Seattle Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> now they're screwed. <laughs> yeah, but like. And I know it's going to cost you money, but you, you got to change your flight. You got to change, you know. You oh, I agree. Right. So it sucks. I know people are like, I can't go anymore. And I guess maybe if they have obligations. It I sucks because like there's going to be entire planes that have to be changed probably. Right. But if you're like me and Meech and you and we, well, me and him stayed. When we went to. <laughs> Stay uh, Wednesday. <laughs> we, we went to L.A. Stay from Friday to week. Tuesday. Yeah. That's what you got to do. But anyway, that night, I think it's the 19th. Is that right, guys? Yes. All right. No, yes. 18th. Is Monday, it the 18th? Monday the 19th. No. Monday the 19th no. for the... No, it's, no, got, it's Monday the 18th, but if you want to do it on the 19th, 18th, 18th. I can be there. <laughs> My bad. I should get the details right. Monday the 18th, City Pigeons. 
Christmas potluck party live pregame podcast, whatever you want to throw in there. Ooh. Watching this, you want to come. Squirrel. Come on. Send us a DM. New Year's Eve. Squirrel, party. are you gonna be back for that, buddy? New Year's Eve party squirrel. I don't saying. know he's gonna be back for that. Oh, Squirrel's you know got a we... coconut right now, dude. He's got a coconut drink right now. He's not yeah, he's drinking a coconut drink. Also worth noting around the holidays. Uh, so Squirrel and I were down the shore a couple months ago with a guy who is part of a troop that does the uh you know the the New Year's Day parade, the mummers. Well, I can't believe it. It's, it's, it took me that long to say that. It's fucking terrible. Oh, we gotta clip that. And the reality is the reality is I've never done that before or really, you know, I, I'm aware of it, you know, but I've never participated in this guy was like, you guys gotta come. And so I think we might have committed ourselves to becoming part of one of these to uh being in the parade or going to it. No, I think we're gonna be in it. Wow. Yeah. Is it all right, squirrel? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's Froggy Car are the dudes. The Froggy, the froggy Car is nuts. They're the ones that break the rules every year and just end up peeing oh, on the streets. Oh, shit. Yeah. They end up on the front page of the paper yeah, have, like, for all the wrong the, reasons. They get canceled. They give you they give you rules and they just break every single rule and then they don't give a shit. They're, you can they're see like the, the radical radicals. squirrel says, "I'm scared." We don't know what to expect. I think but... you'll be in the center chair for the episode after that. Jesse will be. <laughs> Everyone else is Listen, in jail. As I was debating whether or not I should do this and feeling kind of like not sure about what I was going to get into, I was like, I have to do this as an experiment, as a for content alone, just to experience it from that side of things, never having done this before in my life. So I'm doing it for us. That's the idea. Does that make sense? You gonna, you guys? Is this going to be an all day thing for you? Like you're going to go march up Broad Street and then hang out and party down at Two Street Dude. afterwards and do the. I was told, You've never been to Two Street at night. Uh, not in no On New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. No New Year's Day. Me no, neither. and but I was told we have to meet at like 7 a.m. Oh, it's start. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I have the stamina for this. So this is going to be fun. We're gonna we're gonna talk through this, and I'm gonna uh, try my best to make myself a part of this and you guys are going to get to hear about it so that sounds good right sounds good to me does yeah. that mean you're going to be doing the uh polar bear plunge at like 4 a.m no, my son's i can't do both although my wife is kind of like wait what you know i think she signed off but i told her this is something i have to do you know as a philadelphian i have to do this once at least so here we go it's gonna be fun a lot of great events coming up holiday season um by the way if you need uh, some shirts right citypigeonspod.com because we still got a bunch of city pigeon shirts we got Schwarby shirts if you're a big kirkering fan and you think he's gonna be great holiday year, gift stocking stuff too. i'm following these trade deadlines like please lord don't trade over right. <laughs> if you live in redding and he's gonna be on your team next year you <laughs> yeah. want to get a shirt <laughs> hate great me. idea hate. where my boy is that i got you hate so yeah uh there's a lot to be excited about a lot to uh sink our teeth into over the coming weeks and uh we're gonna know a lot more about the football team right over the next couple of weeks and we're where we're headed panicking. and uh you know we did say we had such a great tailgate and thank you to everybody that was a part of that, that um epic. yeah epic tailgate that we definitely want to run it back for playoffs so best case scenario we've got at least uh you know a home game um but we're gonna see how it plays out and uh we're here for it and we're here for you rock so who's your co-star over there that's tt the cat TT T. the cat. Say hi. By the way, TT Meow. reminds me of DD, and Lindsay was sending us some DD content through the Instagram. What's DD been up to? Uh, I think she got her hair done the other day, maybe. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. <laughs> she got her hair <laughs> I mean, oh, 92, was... getting the hair yes, done. If you want to hear an, an interesting, um, she ran yeah, the half tell the story. Again. <laughs> she, she, I'm like, um, Connected to Dee Dee in a in a certain like some Kevin Bacon kind of way. You, do you tell. Want to hear this? Yeah, I do. Um, Dee Dee and her husband, right, Norman? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Yep. They they opened a uh, Salon Norman D, which is a, a hairdresser place in Philadelphia. Well, buddy, it's called I a hair salon. Place. It's called hey, a hair yeah. salon. <laughs> hairdresser place is what I like to refer. I to. like the hairdresser. Right. It's a hair All salon. Right. Right? Yeah. My buddy Vinny, who I went to high school with, he works there in the one in the Northeast. So when I'm sending my, you know, trying to find a barber to send my kids to, I go to my uh, my buddy Vinny, and he's at Salon Normandy, and we Norman we were D. there before we met um, Rock D. and his and his D. lovely wife. So amazing! Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a little connection that me the Kevin Bacon of Philadelphia. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Beautiful. Well, that's nice. Yeah. That's a nice, that nice wholesome moment, and uh, I think that 
that pretty much will do it for us guys our, yeah uh, we need weekly dd content i, I we do agree. rock yeah I I'll, yeah I'll, I'll see what i can gather all right no that's no problem i'll gather it she, all right she's she's on board i'm gonna get her in there i'm gonna try to get her in there she's for here christmas. for the christmas party yeah i'll She'll try to get cut her everyone's hair so to reiterate <laughs> sunday night comedy show at the coops oh, no, saturday, saturday night saturday, saturday night Comedy don't show tell don't tell comedy.com. Check Sunday it out. night. Uh, what is it? Don't tell comedy.com. As we, I won't tell as them. we told. We told. Uh, they Sunday can't night, tell them. Eagles, Cowboys. Monday, the 18th of December, Eagles, Seahawks, City Pigeons, Potluck, Christmas Party, and pregame pod that Mark will not be is, at. This place is Boop. happening. Let's That's go. Right. And by the way, if, and you, if you need a place to host your say, holiday party yes. or any other party or just some people to hang out and have a good time, it's uh, the Coop Philly and DM Jesse, and he'll give you all the details. At the Coop Philly. We just had a guy in here who's uh, taking a look at the place for a casino night. He's going to put put a bunch of poker tables in here. Yep. It's amazing. And, and we the, get to go to all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, the you only need, stipulation, you have to invite us. If you need <laughs> catering for, for your, your event, podcast thanks, Hoagies, during your event. 6 yeah. per person ahead. Talk to us for catering. Thanks, Hoagies. <laughs> On that note, I think there's no better way to close <laughs> this down. <laughs> <laughs> boo! Boo! I, I brought the. I showed this in the last episode. But I didn't do it justice, folks. I brought the Rendelli Wawa Hoagie box. That's a large into large the coop. Look at this. Wow. This was filled with Wawa Hoagies. Now wow. I'm negotiating with Fink to try it was to recreate filled with Wawa Hoagies. Yeah, so that's correct. It was multiple Hoagies, not a full real. Six I'm not foot sure. Ah. I'm not sure. I think they were sliced up. But Wawa, I'm negotiating with Fink, Fink you have to recreate this seated? for. You know, my dad has an 80th birthday coming up. What's up? He's got a party. And you know, Wawa's probably, they're probably thinking, oh, you know, he's not in the spotlight anymore. They're not going to do it. Finks should. Finks will do it. Let's create, recreate the Rendelli. What was Lucio's on the Rendelli? Do you know? You know what? I'm, I'm trying to remember. I feel like it was like an Italian, but there was some pepperoni in there. I got to go back. I got to check it. But you find out it was in the this Rendelli, box. we'd make it happen. Just All look right. at the picture. You can see. Let's go. I see tomatoes and cheese. Ah, and lettuce. Sure. <laughs> All right, Pete. roast beef. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We are out. Dun, dun, City dun, Pigeons, dun, dun, episode dun, dun, 63. Dun, 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 Dallas, we week. appreciate yeah. you. Like, yeah. subscribe. Dallas, Dallas. I'm Calvin. Pissing on the Cowboys. Yeah, Cowboys. Yeah, Cowboys.